of skateboarding. I lived it, I slept it, I breathed it, I dreamed it. From the day that I got my first skateboard to the day I put the first needle in my arm. It's something I worked so hard for since probably Brandon Novak, professional skateboarder. By the way, when he skated, it looked like he was defying all odds. It was crazy. He had a bright, bright future. He was discovered by Tony Hawk at a very young age. He toured the world with his idols. And Novak then later went on to star on MTV shows like Viva La Bam before losing it all to addiction. He's now using his own brush with death to help others, and Brandon's with us this morning. Welcome, Brandon. Thank you for you having me. You look amazing. I feel How amazing. How do you feel? Three years uh, in recovery. Three years, yeah. The difference a day can make, you but, know? The difference a day can make. I was that guy that was deemed unhelpable or unfixable. So tell us about your journey. What happened? Well, the thing was is I, is I, I was too smart for my own good, and I was really successful at a young age. I, I was a former professional skateboarder, first skateboarder ever to be endorsed by Gatorade. Mm -hmm. uh, went on to be in movies that break box office records, then became a New York Times selling author who had written a book on addiction. Dream seller. Yeah, dream seller right there. But I, I did it all while being high. You know? What were you doing? Um, heroin, cocaine, Xanax, mm. wine, you name it. Why more. were you doing it? Um, because I was trying to fill this internal void with the external solution. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, because why not? You know, I was successful. I, On the outside, you yeah, were sex successful. Yeah. On the inside, I was dying. struggling. Yeah, yeah. I, I was dying. So when, what was your, your, your low point? When did you realize, like, I need to get help? You know, it's, I, my mother's a nuclear physicist, my brother's an attorney in the White House, my father died as a direct result of an overdose. Um, I, I ended up on life support for several days, uh, my mother bought me a plot, people had taken life insurance policies out on me. I got to a point at the end where I was the kind of alcoholic that wanted to kill himself on a daily basis, but I didn't want to hurt myself in the process. Uh, I was so low, the curb looked like a skyscraper, and I was horrible at suicide because I kept waking up. And what happened for the first time in my life is I walked into my 13th treatment center at 35 years old, worldly possessions consisting of eight scarves, two jackets, three socks, one stick of deodorant that fit into a bag that doubled as a pillow, and four cigarette butts that I dug out of a receptacle. And what I realized is that I know I don't know. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I always thought that I was too, like, I, I, I achieved things. I was successful in my own right. Um, and what I realized is I, I don't know. I mean, your mother had said something like, uh, praying to God, please cure him, kill him, or kill me, because I can't take this anymore. Yeah, she had exhausted all opportunities, options, and resources. She had sold three homes to financially pay for me to go to treatment, and she had nothing left to give. And she went to God and said, please cure him, kill him, or kill me, because I can't take it anymore. So it took you 14 times, Yeah. which, you know, I, I, I hear, you know, when when you relapse, it's part of the recovery, and you know, as long as you don't kill yourself in that relapse, it's part of the recovery. Yeah. And now you, this is your mission to get yeah. people into recovery. Because what happens is, is, is there's some substance to my story. It's tangible. Mm -hmm. You can see it on the internet. You can see it in the movies, the tabloids, the books. It's a little different than a 50-year-old professor reading out a textbook, giving a mm -hmm. bunch of theories or hypotheses of what may or may not happen if mm -hmm. you choose to drink a drug. Mm -hmm. So 99% of the people that call me, the conversations go like this. Novak, if you can get clean, there's no reason why I can't. Can you help me? You know what I mean? There's the, and these are all ages that are calling yeah. you at all hours because you put your phone number, your personal Absolutely. cell phone number out there. The disease of addiction doesn't discriminate. From Yale or jail, the White House or the outhouse, the results are all the same and one out of seven people will be affected. Hmm. Statistical, statistics state, factual evidence dictates that I am to be high or dead right now. The fact that I'm not is A, miraculous, equaling miracle, and B, it defies logic. Is it because you put your, your faith in God? What... what why did it work this last time? It, it, it worked because I, I got out of my own way. You know what I mean? I, the only thing that was blocking me from getting better was me. So what I realized is that I know that I don't know. You're clean, you're sober, can you help me? Take my hand, lead me to the promised land, per se. And now you're doing that, you're opening up another yeah. uh, play, a rehab yeah. in Pennsylvania? So What's ba it called? Banyan Treatment Center. Um, we're opening, we have locations in Philadelphia, Chicago, Boston, and Florida. Uh, we open April 2nd and uh, you know I travel the the world for that matter and I share my story as a cautionary tale 
Do you travel to each of these centers at various yeah, times yeah. to be able to meet with people there? Yeah, I, I walk with people through their journey of recovery because what I know, I know what it's like to feel so alone that like you just want to die, you know. And I remember when I got sober, I said, you know what, I'm going to do whatever it takes to help the person, the man or woman behind me that's deemed or unhelpable or mm -hmm. unfixable, to let them know that they're not alone. I mean, you got to the point where you were selling yourself for forty dollars. Absolutely. Right. So New York Times seller, uh, movie star that breaks box office records, former professional skateboarder, at the end standing on the corner, East. Avenue in Patterson Park selling my body for $40. My mother's a nuclear physicist. My brother's an attorney in the White House. I wasn't the kid in seventh grade that said, I want to be a homeless heroin addict when I grow up. That wasn't my goals. That wasn't my intentions. So tell me about your centers because I think um, if parents are watching right now and they, they want to put their, their child somewhere, do you take insurance? How does that work? Because that usually is the problem in yeah. getting somebody clean. Well, what I like to say is I'm kind of like the concierge in the treatment center world. My books are very prevalent in treatment centers and in jails and you name it, they're there. So I have a lot of ways and means to help people and guide them in the right direction. So if you're not a fit for our facility, whether it's for insurance reasons or not, then we will find you a place that is a fit for you. You know, there's, there's no one that's not helpable. Um, as long as you're breathing, it's never too late, and, and their history does not have to dictate your future. What's your number again? Because I know you give it out there to everybody. <laughs> Why not give it to our people who may need you? I do. Uh, you can reach me personally at 610-635-9092. Did you find that happiness, that fulfillment internally? I've never been happier in my life. Like, you, you couldn't put a price tag on what I have. And does it get okay. easier every day? It did. It does, provided I stick to the basics. Because they told me when I walked in, kids, stick to the basics. So God willing, you never have to go back to the basics. Because mm -hmm. I can get lost in the accessory of things or the world, for that matter. And, and, and it's not that heavy. You know what I mean? As long, I don't drink or drug, despite any and all adverse consequences that come my way. And I have a shot. Anything's a situation. There's only one problem, and that's if I choose to pick up. Right. All well, right. we're happy Brandon. that you're clean and sober. We sure are, and that you're inspiring and helping so many others. Yeah. It is an epidemic. It, it's not even an epidemic. There. It's a pandemic. Today, right now, in the nation, 174 people will die as a direct result of an opioid overdose. It's worse than the AIDS outbreak. It's worse than World War III. It's the number one offender upon humans. And the sad thing is, is that all these deaths are preventable. Brandon, thank you for sharing your story with us today. Thank, thank you for you. having us on and being right. part of the solution. Good day. Right. Coming right back.